Pretty good. Close. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Bolingbroke Village Board order. I'd like the gentleman for the VFW to please come forward and lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. gentlemen. I'm going to change the agenda just a moment and do a proclamation now. Poppy Days, May 17th to the 19th, that's this weekend. Whereas the annual Poppy Day Drive fundraiser for the Veterans of Foreign Wars in the United, of the United States and the American Legion has been officially recognized and endorsed by governmental leaders since 1922. And whereas VFW Poppy Buddies, American Legion Poppies are, are assembled by disabled veterans and the proceeds of the worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans. And whereas the Poppy Drive fundraiser preceding Memorial Day is a traditional way to bring attention to the sacrifices made by the nation's deceased war heroes and their struggle to keep America free. Now therefore I, Roger C. Clare, Mayor of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Bolingbrook, Will in DuPage County, Illinois, hereby proclaim May 17th through the 19th as Poppy Days in the village and all of our, urge all of our citizens to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously to the support through your donations and to wear a buddy poppy as evidence of our gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in the defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. Accepting tonight is John David. John, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Quick. Oh, you, you want me to collect? <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I give you a poppy. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank the mayor for giving us this opportunity and the board of trustees and our village clerk. The money that we collect here on the streets goes to help veterans in the area and also at our Mantino uh, nursing home for veterans. To date, we've helped about 15 veterans this year alone on water bills, on gas bills, houses on fire, cars on fire. All this money goes into our relief fund to help. Most of us up here, matter of fact, all of us up here, we're dual members. We're also American Legion. And we work programs together. We do programs with the youth. Uh, to date, we've delivered over 9,000 pounds of bread to our township for needy families. So when you see us out there, please help us, because we're helping everybody else. And this is the only way that we can put money into our relief fund. Larry, the commander of American Legion, uh, he'll verify and tell you we all do the same programs together and we work together because we're all veterans. And we thank you for what you're doing and helping support the other veterans. Mr. Mayor, I was really surprised how many members in Bolingbrook that need help that are not members of the VFW or American Legion. How do they sign up? How do they sign up? Come see any one of us. Where? Okay, we have an office over on, uh, right next to the Chamber of Commerce. Two, community Center, 201 uh, Cantonbury, Suite B. Okay. 
We'll get a proclamation, and just for the record, your name again in the branch of service. John Davin, U.S. Army, retired. Larry Shaver, United States Marine Corps. Greg Palmer, United States Navy. Dave Salma, Mar U.S. Army. Herschel Nelson, United States Army. Bill Marslick, U.S. Army. Roy Pura, Marines. Angelo Irizarry, United States Army. Bob Adami, U.S. Army. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your service. And, you know, you bring the average age here down quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you again. And they're going to be uh, distributing poppies for those who feel so inclined. Next, uh, the approval of minutes, regular meeting, May, April 30th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Sir. Trustee Morales, second by Trustee. Oh, yeah, what? 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 Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Minutes are approved. Next, we have the approval agenda. Mr. Bowen. Yes, uh, under uh, the uh, sub. Uh, Heading of Village Recognition C, I'd like to add a number two, Sarah Bohe's uh, Girl Scout Award, Award. No other additions or corrections. So, I motion to approve the agenda is amended. So, so moved. So second. Trustee Lawler, second to Trustee Zarate. Any other comment? Yeah, I requested an uh, item on the agenda about 10 days ago. Uh, I see it's not there. I'd like to make a motion that we amend it to add the trash fees to the agenda. Uh, so there's no second. I do have a brief report. I'll be making about that myself in a few moments. Next, that approval appointments. Uh, we have Evelyn Fletcher, the Beautification Commission, Commission, and Mira Ali is Chairman of the Planning Commission. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. Trustee Morales, second to Trustee Zarate. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. The appointments are approved. Next, we have another proclamation for National Police Week. Mike Rampa, would you join me, please? Well, as the Congress of the United States of America has designated the week of May 12th to the 18th as National Police Week, and May 15th of each year to be Police Memorial Day, and whereas law enforcement officers are guardians of life and property and defenders of the individual right to be free, warriors in a war against crime and dedicated to the preservation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whereas the village of Bolingbrook desires to honor the valor, service, and dedication of its own police officers, and where it is known that every two days an American police officer will be killed in the line of duty somewhere in these United States, and 320 officers will be seriously assaulted in the performance of their duties. Our community joins with other cities and towns to honor all peace officers everywhere. Now, therefore, I register clear, Mayor of the Board of Trustees, Village of Bolingbrook, Will and DuPage County, Illinois, to hereby proclaim the week of May 12th, the 18th, 2019, as National Police Week, and call upon all of our citizens to especially honor and show our sincere appreciation for the police officers of Bolingbrook by deed, remark, and attitude, and to make every effort to express their thanks to our men and women who make it possible for us to leave our homes and families in safety each week and return knowing they are protected by men and women willing sacrifice their lives if necessary to guard our loved ones, property, and government against all those who would violate the law. Accepting our Deputy Police Chief, Mike Rampa. Mike. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Claire and Village Board. I'm very honored to accept this proclamation which recognizes National Police Week. This morning, Director Teppel and I attended the DuPage County Police Memorial Service, and last week I was in attendance at the Will County Memorial Service. Both of these honored those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Last year, 158 officers were killed in the line of duty nationwide, four of those being in Illinois. Sadly, in 2019, we have already lost four officers in Illinois alone, and 42 nationwide, and the numbers continue to rise. One of these being a McHenry County Deputy Sheriff killed by gunfire. The other three were Illinois State Police officers perished by the way of a traffic crash, a vehicular assault, and another one struck by a vehicle. 
And this actually has a tie in, and hits close to home as approximately one month ago, one of our very own Bolingbrook police officers was struck by a vehicle while investigating a traffic crash. This easily could have been one of my aforementioned statistics. The men and the women of the Bolingbrook Police Department work diligently to protect our 76,000 plus residents and our visitors alike. We take great pride in representing this village. However, we cannot accomplish this mission without the partnership of our residents. Without that partnership, we cannot succeed. By expanding this partnership and trust, we will make the village of Bolenberg the best place to reside, raise our families, improve the quality of life, and keep Bolenberg a place to grow. On behalf of the women and men of the Bolenberg Police Department, I thank everyone in this room tonight for this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, a couple of people here to see me, I quickly recognize that came out for this uh, momentous occasion. We have Peg Danhoff, uh, recently reelected as a uh, Fountain Dell Library board member and probably will be president, if not already, again. Ruth Newell from the Fountain Dell Library, Celeste Bermillo from the Library Board, Jerry Hicks from the uh, Bolingbrook Park District, former trustee Sandy Swin Kunis, a uh, school board member recently elected, Diane Perrell. A uh, good friend and a uh, great person to work with with the city, Ron Osteich, director of Bolingbrook Park District. Joe Morelli, uh, also a retired village trustee. Gretchen Schroeder, another retired village trustee. Uh, Bob Kalnecki, uh, Community Service Council uh, chairman. Felix George, who uh, was recently put in as the township supervisor in DuPage Township. And as a very special shout out to a woman that's with us today that I think of often the, the family, and that's Pat Brown. Pat, where are you sitting? Right here. Thanks for coming this evening, Pat. Pat is the widow of Leroy Brown, long time village trustee. In fact, has the record, served as village trustee for 24 years and 11 months. And most of that is deputy mayor. A great, great man. And I'd also like to introduce my wife, Pat, would you please stand? <laughs> now, if you look, notice she's wearing a blue skirt, a green jacket, and a white shirt. So she's kind of like a Bolingbrook flag tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Looks very nice, Pat. <laughs> Also, I'd like to mention, uh, I just, on a sad note, Karen Smith was one of our beautification commissioners who died suddenly a week or so ago. Uh, she served 11 years, a 25-year resident, was a very instrumental, I'm told, in decorating for the parade, festival of life, and uh, she never missed a meeting as commissioner. So uh, I was really sorry to hear about her passing. Uh, the comment was questioned a moment ago about a refuse and recycling program. We've talked for a little over a year now about taking garbage service refuse collection off the property tax bill. There are 286 Chicagoland communities. I believe we were only one of two that had it on the garbage bill or had it on the property tax bill. We actually took it off last year. So this past year, nobody paid for refuse service uh, on their garbage bill or on their property taxes and or direct billing. So we just absorbed that out of the reserves in the village. And recently we sent out a letter, and I'm told the letter probably wasn't the best, but I can assure you it went through probably at least 10, maybe more drafts. And every time you read a letter, you just keep changing and tweaking it, changing and tweaking it. And it probably didn't come out the best, and for that I'm sorry. And it probably should have been rolled out a little earlier. And for that I'm sorry. But the direct building for garbage, the price is not going up. It's not a new charge. It's the same charge you were paying through property taxes. It's approximately $20 a month. Uh, we put on a $2 service or administrative fee. That too was questioned by a number of residents. So we will be reviewing that and perhaps amending it as necessary or as appropriate. But it's gonna be about $20 a quarter. You'll be billed quarterly for $20. This, that, the move to do this was unanimously approved by this board twice in their adoption of our budget. And it was mentioned on some occasions, perhaps not enough, but it was mentioned. 
And uh, so the garbage bill will be police, fire, and public works and related services like most communities. None of the communities around us, Lamont, Romeville, Woodridge, Lyle, Naperville, Plainfield, none of them have in our property tax bill. They're billed separately through our water bill or some other mechanism. So we're going to what the others are and hopefully we can keep the property taxes down. <clears throat> the timing too was not good and the fact that the letter hit about the time the property tax bills hit. And of course when property tax bills hit, I always meet a lot of new friends. <laughs> <laughs> and the school district again took a big jump and I think most every school district. It wasn't unique to Valley View, it went up in Plainfield, I think it went up in all the other school districts. Now I just want to tell you about property taxes. 65 to 70 percent of your property tax bill goes to the school district. That's true everywhere in the state of Illinois. I will also want to tell you, and the school district gets their finger point at them, as do I, even though I have nothing to do with the school district. The state of Illinois, by the 1970 Constitution, is to pay for 50 percent of public school funding. Now what the state of Illinois the General Assembly and the Governor's Office have been doing the last several years is very slowly taking away from what they're supposed to do and passing it back to local school districts, passing it back to the village. And the 50% that they're supposed to be funding by is now down to about 24%. Now, I'm not going to tell you if they raise it to 50% like they're supposed to, your taxes will go down, but it would certainly stabilize them. So what the Illinois General Assembly doing, if you want to talk to people, talk to your legislators. They're the ones that keep playing that little game of stealing from local taxing bodies by not funding them as they're committed to do so, which forces them to go to you on your property taxes. That's the real problem here, is the Illinois General Assembly. And uh, I wish more people <coughs> would, would pursue that because it just gets kind of irritating when people don't understand that the Springfield is the one doing this to you, not us. A uh, sheet's been prepared with the frequently asked questions about the refuse program. This question and answer sheet was posted on a web page today and uh, that will explain and answer some of your questions and I have gotten some calls. I've made I've got letters and calls from people and I'm calling you back as I can get answers and talk with you. Um, there's no, nothing secret here. It was all done publicly and again uh, we will get through this. Uh, next, I have asked Ken Teppel if he would give us an update. We've had a couple of very unfortunate incidents in this very diverse, welcoming city and village we live in. I can tell you as mayor, there is more, nothing more disgusting than to find out what happened in an apartment with somebody tagging it with some um, racist and other remarks. And there's nothing worse than an incident that occurred in our McDonald's last week, which has gone viral on the internet between uh, a grown man and some young men and women who I give a tremendous amount of credit to for just listening and not engaging this man who was way, way out of line. Uh, there's nothing more disgusting for me to see that. Now some say, well, why don't I stand up and pound on something? Trust me. Ken Teppel, our Director of Public Safety, and Mike Romp, our Deputy Police Chief, they have full um, authority to chase this down and they've been working on both cases for diligently ever since they both occurred. And we're very close and I'll let Ken give you an update. Ken? Thank you. So for those of you who were here two weeks ago, I gave a quick update on the, our first incident that occurred on Friday, April 26th at about 2.45 in the morning over on Enclave, which is a uh, townhome subdivision uh, off of Briarcliff, east of McDonald's. Um, red spray paint was found on the front of the house with some racial slurs and anti-Semitic uh, symbolism, and a brick was thrown through the lower bedroom of uh, a 21-year-old son. We've spoken to um, the son. We've spoken to his, several of his friends, and we uh, have developed a very, very promising suspect. And... Um, as when most people know the police are on them, they usually attempt to hide. So right now we're attempting to find this person. He's deactivated his phone, he has gone into hiding, and we are currently out on the streets uh, uh, looking for him. So we developed a very good suspect in this one. Um, and we've been in constant contact, not only with the family, but also with the Will County State's Attorney in every turn of this. So we're, we're, we're step, 
we're step in step with uh, with the investigation on this. So hopefully in another two weeks, I might have another update on that one. And uh, on the McDonald's case, for some of you who don't know, this broke uh, Saturday night about 9:47 p.m. at McDonald's West on Weber Road. And uh, as a quick quick summation is uh, there was a group of of uh, BHS students in there after a movie in McDonald's and even the management there said he didn't even know they were there. They were fantastic. They weren't causing a problem. There were no issues. A uh, male came in and got into a confrontation with the uh, group of kids and confronted one of them and got in his face and was rather aggressive, shouted obscenities and uh, racial slurs. <coughs> and we were called. By the time we got there, he had jumped in a, a dark colored SUV and had left the area. We were unable to locate him. We talked to all the kids' parents. We got everybody home. Uh, the next morning, we were able to get some cell phone video of the incident. And we've got some great stills. And we cleaned up the video. It's on our Facebook page. Um, we're out there now looking for assistance from uh, the public to help us identify this person. We don't believe he's in the area from the, the legwork we've done the past couple days, so now we're expanding our search out. And uh, we worked with the high school, uh, some deans over there and the assistant principal to identify this person. We believe that they, they come and go and they're affiliated with education possibly. So. Um, we, uh, it is posted on our Facebook page, so if you go on Facebook and just type in Bolingbrook Police or Bolingbrook PD, it'll pop up. The video is on there. We also have a link on our Village website, and Crime Stoppers of Will County also has a link on their website. So we're, we're uh, and we have a um, person of interest on this one that we're looking at too, and I don't want to elevate it to a suspect level because we'd like to reach out to this person and, and actually get a little more information from them on this. But uh, if you're out, have a chance. Go on, uh, take a look and see if you can help us out. But we are we are running this down nonstop. We have detectives assigned to every single lead on us. Thank you, Ken. I'm very sorry to have to report this in this great evening to celebrate some the election and the election of the trustees. But I think it's important that you all need to know we're throwing everything in the police department at both incidents. And uh, when we make an arrest, we will do what we can to make sure this is. Uh, punished at the ultimate level, whatever level we can get, that'll be up to the Will County State's Attorney. Mm -hmm. But it is not being ignored, I can guarantee you that. And I'm as ashamed of it as anybody in this room. Next, swearing in as new commissioners, I'd like to ask Evelyn Fletcher from Education Commission to please join me. Phyllis, you're gonna join her? Phyllis Ruggiero, Chairman of the Beautification Commission. Okay, Evelyn. A 17-year resident. Why did it take so long to get involved? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Her ex experience in um, like decorating, floral arrangements, uh, loves uh, driving around doing the judging, yep. and looking to help in landscaping and decorating. So Evelyn, uh, welcome aboard. If you would, you please raise your right hand, please. I state your name. I, Evelyn Fletcher. Solomon Square. Solomon Square. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. I will faithfully discharge my duties. As a member of the Beautification Commission. As a member of the Beautification Committee. In a manner prescribed by law. In a manner prescribed by law. Welcome to work. Oh, there's two left. I want to give you a bowling book, then. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And there's your official commission. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. Welcome to work. Jim, make note to replenish the, <laughs> the pens. Next, uh, I'd like to swear in our new planning commission chair, as you know. Mary Basta was elected to the village board. She'll be sworn in later this evening, and she was chair of the planning commission. So I'd like to ask the, um, a member of the planning commission who will become the new chair of the planning commission to be, come forward and be sworn in. That is Mir Ali. He's a 20-year resident of Bolingbrook. And uh, there's something I want to mention about Mir. He's a, uh, very involved in the Pakistani community. Uh, he was very involved in starting the cricket program here in Bolingbrook. And uh, one thing that is not often known by Mir, but step over a bit. We're uh, 
You served in what? U.S. Army, sir. Special Forces, four years, active duty. So he's a veteran of our United States Army. So again. Now the gentleman from the Legion and the VFW probably wonder why you're not a member. <laughs> I'm a member, I'm a lifetime member. <laughs> Just don't have time to volunteer a lot. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Raise your right hand, please. I state your name. I'm Mirali. You solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. Uphold the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the State of Illinois. Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will face you. I, I, I don't ever do this. The Miss Go to Village of Bolingbrook. Miss Bolingbrook. And I will face you discharge my duties. I will faithfully discharge my duties. As chairman of the Bolingbrook Planning Commission. As chairman of the Bolingbrook Planning Commission. Best of my ability. To the best of my ability. In a manner prescribed by law. In a manner prescribed by law. Next, some recognition for Kevin Brown. I'd like to ask some jet people from the Bolingbrook Community Chorus to please join me. Jack Fian, Jack, it's all yours. Thank you. I'm Jack Finan, Finan, the president of the Bolingbrook Community Course. There really isn't enough time to mention Kevin Brown's accomplishments and his contribution to Bolingbrook and to the course. After noticing a Sun newspaper ad in 1989, he became our talented pianist for the next 30 years. He never imagined that he'd devote half of his life supporting the chorus. His extensive training and musical experience served him and our group well. His entire family had roots in Bolingbrook as he and Michelle raised two girls, Stephanie and Elizabeth, in homes in Lancaster Road and in the fields of Bradford. He currently works at Argonne National Labs and keeping him in our area. He also performs with and often directs their chorus. We've enjoyed his friendship as he keeps us in tune at practices and semi-annual concerts. I'm pleased to turn this over to Mayor Roger Clare as he presents an award. Where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? Ah, there he is. <laughs> <coughs> Kevin Brown, 1989 to 2019, awarded this honor for his 30 years as dedicated, talented accompanist for the Bolingbrook Community Chorus, presented by the Bolingbrook Community Chorus and the Village Bolingbrook. I'd like to ask Sarah Boheis, I believe. Sarah, where are you? Pictures, Genshin, to get the father up here. Yes. Well, he's got a camera. Up. Will somebody take the picture? So, come on up. Well, parents, come on up here. We uh, have outside this village boardroom, and you may have noticed this evening or other evenings, plaques acknowledging all the young men and women who have been very active in scouting, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Uh, and have earned the highest award in both those organizations. 
Uh, I've often said that if every young man and woman in Bolingbrook were involved in Boy Scouting, Girl Scouting, and Campfire, we have a lot fewer problems in this society we call the village of Bolingbrook. Anyway, uh, there's, ob there's not obviously, there's more Boy Scouts that earn the rank of Eagle, but the Girl Scouts have an award called the Gold Award. And uh, Sarah has uh, achieved that rank, and I wanted to acknowledge that and let the people of Bolingbrook know that for a fact. So Sarah, would you like to introduce your parents? Um, sure. Uh, these are my parents. Uh, this is my mom. She was my Girl Scout troop leader. And that's my dad, Rudy and Jane Valhais. You can step over a little bit and he can stand up here too. <laughs> so, how long have you been in scouting? Uh, 13 years, 12, 13 years, yeah. And I was, I, caught, I was curious about your project. What is the project you did? Um, I made a butterfly garden for my church. So we have like a courtyard in the front that was kind of dead looking and I uh, spruced it up a little bit and I made it a butterfly prayer garden since the butterfly is the symbol of our church and of New Life. So. New Life Lutheran Church on Route 53. So how long did it take? Um, total it took about mm, 60 hours was my total count I believe. 60 hours? I, I think so. <laughs> so when did you finish it? Um, uh, in summer, last summer, uh, August. Time. Hey, I asked that question because the proof of the pudding here is, are there any butterflies there? There were, yes. Uh, there should be again this summer, so if you want to come visit, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, like over the year, not really, because it was cold and butterflies don't like the cold. And what kind of plants do you put in there to attract butterflies? Um, we have a lot of milkweed plants, which are uh, good nesting and like breeding ground for butterflies. And there's some others that I don't remember the name of right now. <laughs> well, Cindy Hennessy, a, another resident, a resident of Morningbrook, is a huge fan of butterflies. And she has done, she's pushed us to the, not to the edge, we're close though. <laughs> you know Cindy, she's uh, very passionate. And we have planted milkweed and other types of plants similar to milkweed all over Bolingbrook. And we actually got an award. Lucas, what was the name of that award? Uh, way Station. Way Station. Butterfly Way Station. So it's butterflies stop at Bolingbrook when they're coming through. So what are your future plans? Um, I'm currently at Syracuse University for college. I'm hoping to get into art education so I can be an art teacher. And yeah. How'd you pick Syracuse? Uh, I wanted to go kind of far, and then <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Probably cheap, too, isn't it? Uh, not quite, <laughs> no. Well, you've got to be proud, we are. and we're very, uh, very pleased for you, and we'd like to present you with this plaque. The Village of Bolingbrook is proud to congratulate Sarah for her outstanding achievement, earning the Girl Scout Gold Award, Bolingbrook, and so forth. Your name, I believe, has already been inscribed on a plaque out front. Did you see it? Not yet. Uh, there's a gold award plaque outside. Uh, it should be on there. I'm told I think it was on there, but if it isn't, it'll be up soon, along with the other girls that have done this. So, again, congratulations. Thanks for coming out tonight. Next, we have bill approval, Exhibit A, $762,603.93, Exhibit B, $778,059.33, total of $1,530,763.26. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion Second. Trustee Jesuit, Second of Trustee Zarate. Questions? Hearing none, roll call vote please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watt. Yes. Trustee Holguin. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasper. Yes. Ready for motions? Am I missing anything? Nope. We're good. Good. Okay. Our first motion this evening. It's a motion to ratify an award for emergency repair contract to Aries Inc. Is our motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Watt. Second, Trustee Morales. Uh, at the end of April 30th meeting, we reported to you that an emergency motion was passed to repair a 24-inch pressurized iron pipe used for aeration at sewage treatment plant number one. The pipe had failed. The motion authorized expenditures up to 115000 The staff obtained three quotes. 
The lowest qualified quote was from Aries Inc. The amount of $98,388.05. They've done a lot of work here in Bolingbrook over the years for home builders and others. This motion ratifies the contract awarded by myself and public services to get this emergency repair done. Uh, an emergency like this, you don't have time to go out a formal bidding process, which could take 60 days or more, and this involves a sewage treatment plant, which you want to keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> or the stuff that goes through it. Or the stuff, yeah, okay. <laughs> TMI. Uh, okay, uh, questions. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasko. Yes. Our next motion is to approve a low bid from Elmer Chicago Stone Company in the amount of forty thousand six hundred dollars for two thousand nineteen twenty MFT funds. That's motor fuel tax uh, group one concrete and aggregate or rock. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion Trustee Lawler. Second Trustee Jasowitz. This motion accepts the word bid from Elmer Chicago Stone <coughs> for concrete or stone to use during the year for MFT projects. One bid was returned in the amount of forty thousand six hundred, which is eight hundred dollars over the budget amount of three thirty nine thousand eight hundred. So it's a little over budget, but it comes from Elmer Stone, located here in Bolingbrook. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasper. Yes. Next motion, accept the low bid from Route 66 Asphalt Company in the amount of $41,707.50 for the MFT Materials Group 1 Hot Mix at Asphalt. Mm -hmm. Their motion. So moved. Second. Second. Most Trustee Morales. Second to Trustee Lawler. This motion accepts the lowest qualified bid for hot mix asphalt for use during the MFT projects. Two bid packages were sent out, two were received. While Gallagher Materials Corporation had the lower per ton charge, when pickup delivery charges were factored in, their total bid exceeded the amount from the competitor mm -hmm. company. Uh, the adjusted price is $41,707.50, which is $5,128.85 under Gallagher's price and $8,542.50 under the budget amount of $50,250. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. <coughs> yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jesquit. Yes. <coughs> the next motion is to accept the low bid from Globe Construction, the amount of $287,004.50 for the 2019 20 MFT sidewalk program. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Morales, second Trustee Lawler. This motion accepts the low bid from Globe Construction for the MFT sidewalk program. Six bid packages were sent out, three bids were received. The low bids $287,004.50, which is $12,995.50 under the budget of $300,000. Uh, when are we going to put out the list of the sidewalks to be repaired? Lucas, do you know? <clears throat> as far as we have a list, we don't publish that, but. We can if you want. Well, I'll just say if people want to know if their sidewalk could be repaired or you have a re sidewalk that needs repairing, uh, call us and let us know. We'll see if you're on the list or if we can be added to the list. Yeah, if you have an issue with your sidewalk, please let us know. <laughs> and even if it's not on the list, you know, we will evaluate how severe it is. And if it is severe, we will find a way to get it done this year. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasko. Yes. Next motion to accept the low bid from Precision Pavement Markings, Inc., the amount of $146,896 for the MFT pavement marking. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to Trustee Watts. Second to Trustee Zarate. This motion awards the 2019-20 MFT pavement marking program, the low bidder precision pavement markings, five bid packers sent out, five bids returned, the low bid, 146,896, is $28,104 under budget. Questions? I assume everybody knows what pavement markings are. Uh, any other questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasper. Yes. The next motion to accept the low bid from Traffic Control Corporation, amount of $51,915 for the 2019-20 MFT Materials Group 1 Street Light Poles. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Morales. Second Trustee Lawler. This motion accepts the low bid for Street Light Poles from Traffic Control Corporation. Three bid packets were sent out, one bid returned. 
The bid is the amount of $51,915, which is $1,915 over budget. Uh, it's actually, street light poles are a hard commodity to get a hold of. I'm not sure why, but you got to order them and stockpile them, or you can't get them in short order. Mentioning the street light, the uh, signal at 53 at Royce, people keep asking when that's going to be <coughs> energized or turned on. Sorry, <coughs> I can't search the web on Apple Watch. <laughs> Sorry, my watch was talking to me. Uh, the light, first of all, there's a ComEd problem getting it energized, which means the appropriate amount of electricity to it. And secondly, now the problem is coming down 53 toward that intersection, they're trimming a lot of the shrubbery and trees along there to make sure you got good visibility of that light. But I assume it's going to be within the next couple of weeks. Anyway, <coughs> questions on the streetlight poles? Just a comment, uh, these are replacement poles, so they are not <coughs> poles that are put up uh, whenever we extend the street or put up new streets. Uh, these are for when there are accidents, poles are taken out. We try to get uh, repa these repaid by the insurance company, correct, Lucas? Yeah, if it's uh, part of a traffic accident and we know who uh, did it, we will send a bill uh, for the repairs. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watt. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasper. Yes. The first resolution is evening is approving a renewal of a contract between the Village of Bolingbrook and the GAD Group Technology for Consultant Contractor Services. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Lawler, second Trustee Zarate. <coughs> this resolution renews an annual contract with the GAD Group Technology for IT services. The GAD Group provides two on-site consultants to provide help desk and software support services. The cost is $210,000, of which, uh, which was budgeted. The Finance Committee has reviewed and recommends approval. Uh, the GAD Group is based here in Bolingbrook, and uh, they do an excellent job. In fact, they were the Business of the Year at the recent uh, Chamber Business of the Year Awards program. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watt. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasper. Yes. So we have all this business, but the wheels of government got to keep rolling, and uh, a lot of this is construction related, and we got to get we got a very short <coughs> construction season in the state, as you know, so we got to get these things approved. Next resolution approving the independent contract agreement between the Village of Bolingbrook and Robert Lee. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Second. Motion, who made the motion? Watts. Uh, Trustee Watts, second Trustee Jesuits. This resolution reviews an IT contract with Robert Lee to provide application software support for the village's AS400 computer program. The co annual cost is $49,920, which is the budgeted amount. The finance committee has reviewed and recommends approval. <coughs> Questions? I just like to make a quick comment. Um, a lot of people ask, why do we pass these so quickly? Why don't we have a lot of discussion? because we've had discussion on this. Most of the stuff has been approved through our budget meetings and hearings and stuff afterwards. And so a lot of those discussions have taken place and we've pre-approved a lot of this stuff. Such so those first five motions earlier were all from the motor fuel tax. We knew what was coming in, we had projections, and we're spending what we've already pre-approved. And we're just making it official today, so. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jasquin. Yes. Next resolution approving a professional service agreement with BNF Construction Code Services for the Building Inspection Services. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Morales. Second to Trustee Lawler. This resolution approves a contract with BNF Code. BNF Construction code services for the third party inspections. In the building department during construction season, current staff levels cannot keep up with the volume of demand. The hour of cost is $80 an hour. Budget <coughs> cost is $40,000 to this firm. The Public Service Committee again has reviewed this and recommends approval. And as we mentioned a moment ago, it was discussed during our budget workshop. Uh, this is a consultant contract rather than have staff up for a 12 month season. The inspections are all come due typically in the spring and summer. So we contract those services out rather than have all those people on the payroll 12 months a year. The same is true for the uh, uh, IT people that we're <coughs> talking about. Is there a motion? I think we have, we have a motion. Yeah. Is there a question? Yeah. 
Hey, Nan, roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jesper. Yes. The next resolution <coughs> approving a professional service agreement with H.R. Green for a building plan review and inspection services. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion Trustee Hoagland. Hoagland. Second to Trustee Lawler. This resolution approves a contract with H.R. Green to provide third party inspection services for the building department and plan review services for the engineering department. This is a six month retainer, June through November. The monthly fee is not to exceed 14000 or 84000 for six months. Hourly rates vary, ranging on an $84 an hour to a $260 an hour based on the service being provided by the engineering firm. This again has been reviewed by the Public Services Department. Rec they recommend approval. Questions? Hearing on roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jesper. Yes. The next motion is a motion to acknowledge and accept the abstract of votes for the consolidated election held April 2nd, 2019 from DuPage and Will County clerks. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Morales. Second of Trustee Lawler. God. It's disgusting. It's Galoo, real. Because they're... Michael Carpenzano, 3,724 votes. <clears throat> Questions? Comments? Debate? <laughs> Probably could have some of that. Did I skip something? Yeah. Motion five, sir. Well, let's go ahead. Roll call vote. No, hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jesper. Um. Yes. <laughs> uh, a bit of a, a downer. Uh, I forgot one resolution, so I got to stop and do that one very quickly. <coughs> resolution approving a proposal from TPI Building Code Consultants for third party inspection services. Motion? So moved. Second. Most Trustee Watts. Second of Trustee Lawler. This resolution retains TPI Building Code Consultants to provide construction inspections during the summer months when the volume number exceeds the current staffing ability <coughs> to provide. The cost is $80 an hour. The total cost not to exceed $26,000. Public Service Committee is reviewed and recommends approval. Questions? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Zarati. Yes. Trustee Lawler. Yes. Trustee Watts. Yes. Trustee Hoagland. Yes. Trustee Morales. Yes. Trustee Jesuit. Yes. So we have accepted the abstracts of votes. Three people were duly elected to the position April 2nd. Uh, two people are retiring this board. One was re-elected this board. And I'd like to start with Teresa Ogwin, who has served two years, uh, chose not to run for re-election. Uh, Teresa lives on what's called the historic section of Bolingbrook. And uh, a couple years ago, one of our long-standing trustees, Pat Shanks, uh, had to step down for health reasons. And uh, when that happened, I wanted to make sure the section of Bolingbrook, the historic section of Bolingbrook was represented as it had been very well for a number of years and it's not so much true now but there was a time when the east, the older section, the historic section of Bolingbrook was often pitted against the newer parts of Bolingbrook with comments like you don't care about us anymore, all you care about is the west side. Now we still get that in fact but it's just further west. But uh, Dereesa did a great job stepping in under those circumstances. And uh, she very, was very involved in the Bolingbrook Women's Club. That's uh, kind of how we came about her name. And she was interested in filling out that term, which she's done very successfully. And uh, Dereesa, would you like to step down here, please? Say a few words. A few. 
<laughs> I don't say many. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to present you with this. Uh, we looked around for something to give. We thought about a plaque, so on, but <clears throat> plaques become something that's not very helpful or valuable after a while. It's like, where do you put it? And, um, I'm going to have a bonfire myself. But <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to present this to you because this is something I think is, I think is very attractive and we liked it because it had the Bolingbrook colors in it. And uh, in fact, after we ordered these, I was in Springfield at a function and uh, two of these were on display in that particular place. So I thought we must have done good. Somebody else likes them too. <laughs> but it's with sincere appreciation for years of service to Village of Bolingbrook as Village Trustee, February 28, 2017 to May 14th. 2019. Thank you. Okay, now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Mayor Claire for the opportunity and the privilege of serving the community. My hometown gave me an opportunity to see just how many people care. And I would like to thank my fellow trustees. They've been awesome. They know how to nudge me when I <laughs> need a nudge. and They know how to um, whisper and tell me to, there's a mic. <laughs> <laughs> and our staff, our staff has been wonderful. They're great. Our police and our fire, our first responders, wonderful. Our public works, they're not too bad either. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to miss being here. But I won't miss that TV every time I looked up and I saw my face. <laughs> um, but thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And I love serving my community. And I've had people say, we're going to miss you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be here. I'm still in the old part of town, and <laughs> I like it there. <laughs> thank you. Next, uh, Ricardo Rick Morales, and that's a Rick with a C, R-I-C, there's no K. <laughs> Rick, come on down. bit about Rick. Served 18 years and one month as village trustee. That is the fourth longest serving trustee in history of village. As I pointed out a while ago, uh, Leroy Brown is the longest. Michael Aller is second with 23 years and nine months. And Sandy Swincunis, exactly 20 years, and she's also with us tonight. Yeah. Who? 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 Yeah. <laughs> You know, in my position, and you see it on Facebook, the point, frankly, where it gets a little irritating and somewhat disgusting because what's often said is somewhat of an insult to the fine people that serve on that dais. That they're my lemmings, they're my puppets, they're my whatever. They do whatever I say to do. That is just so far from the truth. As even Bob Jesuits, made the comment a minute ago. All these things that we pass on are discussed at multiple levels before they ever get to this board level. They're discussed by staff, with me, with Mr. Bone, back to staff, other vendors, back to internal staff negotiations, internal department negotiations and discussions. And then goes to a board subcommittee where it's discussed. Sometimes it's reworked, sometimes it's passed. And then, of course, to this, and of course, it all is discussed in a budget workshop, at least the large ticket items. 
So these things are pretty well beat up when we get to the board. And uh, I say all that because if there was any one of the history of trustees <laughs> that occasionally had a question, <laughs> is that nice as <laughs> that would occasionally have a concern about the direction or didn't particularly like what we're doing because Rick's job is in banking and of course part of that banking is financing so he would often look at the numbers a little differently than somebody that didn't have that kind of background so uh, we had our differences philosophically on several occasions in fact, the conversations a couple of evenings were rather cool. <laughs> well, but <laughs> um, but he served well. He was there when you needed him. He showed up at everything, and uh, he will be missed. So, the three people stepping into those positions tonight, take note. Uh, Teresa, for example, longtime resident, knows the southeastern part of Bolingbrook, the historic section of Bolingbrook, that's something that comes to the table that not everybody can bring because they don't live it. And Rick's case is certainly the long time experience, the banking experience, and so forth. So, Rick, I have something for you too. You might recognize it because Reese got one. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I don't know what kind of office you have at the bank, but if you get a corner office someday on a high rise, this will reflect very nicely as the morning sunshine reflects through it. Thank you very much. Now, I was torn. I know we're going to get something, a gift for a two year trustee and a gift for an 18 year trustee. And it seemed like, well, you know, it ought to be just a little different for the 18 year trustee. So I didn't go back to the traditional plaque, but I thought this was also very attractive and it's something you can have maybe in that corner office. It's a very small clock, but you can see it because you're young. <laughs> <laughs> Not so With much. With sincere appreciation for years of service to the Village of Bolingbrook as Village Trustee, Ricardo Rick Morales, April 10, 2001 to May 14, 2019. It's very nice. Thank you, Mayor. Too kind. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to say a few words, and please indulge me. Um, funny thing you say about the clock, being able to see it. <laughs> you know, in 2001, I didn't need these. So it's been a little bit of time. So um, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone who supported me uh, throughout the years. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve as a Bolingbrook trustee representing our, our residents. Um, something that I will often remember. For the next few minutes though, I'd like to take some time to talk about the village and specifically about our tagline, a place to grow. I think sometimes we take it for granted while serving on the Village Board, I've always described our efforts as a group of individuals working together for one common goal, the betterment of Bolingbrook. And that always included Bolingbrook a place to grow, making it a place to grow. I've seen in the 23 years here in town, seen it grow, individuals and families and businesses move to Bolingbrook for a reason. I'd like to think it's because they found something appealing about Bolingbrook, could be the housing market, jobs, schools, parks, libraries, hospitals, infrastructure, whatever it was. There have been some detractors along the way, however, uh, don't allow those few individuals to ruin what we have collectively worked hard to create. Now let's go back to a place to grow. I want to make this about my family because my family is very important to me. My family means everything to me like I'm sure your families mean everything to you. Yes, every now and then we have our quarrels with our family members, but my family, I love them all, especially my children and my wife. My children in our town have made friends. They learned to ride bikes, ride their skateboards. They learned to fish at hidden lakes. They went to great schools here in town. They made friends. In other words, a place to grow for them. 
They created memories. They will always call Bolingbroke home. They learn what volunteerism is. That's not something we're short on in this town. Plenty of volunteers, plenty of service organizations. It's not another thing that we're very proud of. In other words, this is a place to be. And they, my children, will always call Bolingbroke home. The parades, concerts, 4th of July celebration, village picnics. I saw the faces of the parents when they were full of pride watching their children, just as mine were with my children. And that's something that I like to think as community leaders we're a part of. Because we are responsible for making sure that things go right and working with other boards, such as park districts and school districts and libraries, to make sure that we are able to provide the families in our town the resources and services that they need. Bolingbrook is noted for many positive things, including its diversity. That's one of the things that you always hear about. Look around the, board, the, the room today. Now, I was the first Mexican-American to serve on the village board. And my good friend and mentor, Leroy Brown, someone who I would remember and finally think about all the time, was the first African-American to serve on the board. Mayor Claire recognized the importance of our board representing the diverse makeup of our community, community early on. And I thank you for that. He reached out to us and asked us to get involved, and we did. We enjoy cultural celebrations and events in Bolingbrook. We celebrate our veterans, as you saw today. We have beautiful memorial outside. And the freedoms afforded to us by the United States. I think that our great country should take a look at the village of Bolingbrook and take note. Diversity does work. Welcome it and embrace it and know that great things can come from it. Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. With this in mind, I would like to unofficially add to our tagline two words, peace and progress. Because working together as this diverse board has for many years will result in a place to grow through peace and progress. I would like to remind the board that the department and the department has that we trust in you to do the right things for the overall good. Lead with humility and not a title or a name tag. And if you don't, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, on behalf of my family and myself, thank you for putting Bolingbrook first. You have our respect. Jim Bowen, I thank you for your knowledge and patience. Mike Lawler, you, Joel Morelli, Leroy Brown, Sandy Sunkunis, Pat Shanks, and Gretchen Schroeder have always been like brothers and sisters to me. Older brothers and sisters. Oh. <laughs> More like big brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. Big too. Yeah. Maria and Teresa, thank you for serving with dedication. To a newly elected group, one thing I want you to know, this is kind of the best advice I could give you. Other people's words do not define who you are. Be true to yourself and always carry common sense with you. That's important. Bob, we've had our differences. Yes. But I respect <laughs> what you've done Early on as volunteers, you've been around, and I hope that you'll continue to do what's best for this town, making sure that your intentions are for the overall good, along with the rest of the board members. Uh, department heads, you guys are fantastic. You and the staff have been loyal and dedicated, and we truly appreciate that. There's one more thing I'd like to do, and uh, that's to thank my wife, Rosanna, my children, Andrea, also known as Andy and Evan, for allowing me to be part of this board and apologize for any moments I may have missed that were shared as a family. So now what I'd like to do is just take a few minutes to put on the screen a few pictures and indulge me for a little bit more. These pictures are kind of just to show you that time goes by really quick. Really quick. Uh, so please, enjoy the ride because it's short. <coughs> Mm. That's me being sworn in 18 years ago. Some of the pictures are small, so I apologize. I'm trying to see what they are. You know those characters there. <laughs> Besides working hard, we also played uh, and, and found time to uh, have fun. <coughs> that is one of my mentor, Leroy Brown, shaking hands with my son when he was four. You'll see some pictures of me fishing with my kids at Hidden Lakes at the pumpkin patch here in town. 
And in the end, you're going to see, well, you'll see them with fire engines and police uh, cars because they were always involved. Bolingbrook Park District, I thank you for BYBL and Bolingbrook Soccer, which my kids were very much a part of as I was coaching. And guess what? In the end, in the end, <laughs> when it gets here, they grow up. And one of the reasons that I am stepping down is so that I can't spend more time with them. So, again, I thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity. God bless. Now it's time to swear in the new board members. And I honestly don't have a particular order we're going to do this in. Uh, what was the ballot? What was the ballot position? Who was first in the ballot? Oscar. No, who Mary. was first? Mary was first. That's a tagline. Mary. Mary. Mary Basta. Well, she's coming up with uh, her designated family members to be in the picture. Come up. I'd like to introduce this gentleman to my left, your right. I met this gentleman, Judge Ben Braun, some years ago because he was the assigned judge to the circuit. In Bolingbrook, we have a circuit uh, judgeship uh, that's assigned up here to handle a Will County court call and deal with the various issues in the court system of Will County. Ben Braun came up here, didn't know him, we met, got to know him. He stopped by periodically and let me know what's going on, his observations about the situations in the court proceedings. But most importantly, he took a liking to a woman named Joanne Robinson. Now, some of you may remember Joanne Robinson, uh, just an energizer buddy that wanted to help kids start a program called the Heart Program. And she would ID kids that needed some guidance and some help generally young teenagers, and she would take them into what could be considered a military situation where the young men had to wear white shirts and ties. They had to say yes sir and no sir. And she taught them respect for the law. She taught them respect for one another. And she did an excellent job. Unfortunately, she passed away. But she, Judge Ben Braun took her under his wing and made sure that he would make referrals of young men that were in trouble in his, his courtroom and he would assign them to spend so much time with Joanne before they could be released. Uh, not, not a jail situation certainly, but just to make sure they were being mentored correctly. So that was very impressive that Judge Braun did that as associate judge. After practicing law in Will County for two decades, he was appointed to judiciary in 2006 and in his 13th year as judge has held assignments in nearly every division in Will County's court system. He's presided over more than 100 jury trials and literally thousands of hearings. He's currently a supervising judge of the misdemeanor division, which includes, includes six courtrooms in the Will County Courthouse, as well as court calls heard in Bolingbrook and other municipalities around the county. He's a graduate of the University of Illinois, Stetson University College of Law, and resides in Frankfurt with his wife, Wendy, and they just celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary. So it's my pleasure to introduce you, Judge Ben Braun, who will swear in Mary Basta. And all of you, get over here, please. A lot more room. Thank you, Mayor. Before I get started, uh, I've had the opportunity to swear in uh, uh, boards of uh, four or five different municipalities in the last uh, in the last two weeks. I got to tell you, first of all, I'm thrilled to be back here in Bolingbrook and see so many people uh, that I met and established friendships with over the two years that I heard cases here in Bolingbrook. But what I'm especially impressed is how you filled this boardroom tonight. Uh, I don't think there's another municipality in the county uh, uh, that could turn out this number of people. And I recognize that a lot of you are here because of your support uh, for the candidates that were successful. But it's also really a tribute to your commitment to your community. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Would you like to introduce your family? I would. Thank you. I have uh, my husband, Ahmed, my oldest, Peter, youngest, Benjamin, 
my mom, my uncle, and my mother-in-law, straight from Egypt. They don't have names? They do. <laughs> um, my mother is Nabila Alexander, Nabil, and Eva. Okay. She's got the easy one. Uh, you, you can go, yeah, that's fine, thank you. All right, uh, Mayor, if you raise your right hand uh, and repeat after me, I please state your name. I, Mary Alexander Bosco. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold. That I will uphold. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The, mun the Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. The Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. My duties as trustee of the village of Bolingbrook. My duties as trustee of the village of Bolingbrook. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. In a manner prescribed by law. In a manner prescribed by law. Congratulations. <laughs> First, this is your official commission. And this is your certificate of election from the Will County Clerk's Office. Nice. Gosh, Mary, w would you like to say a couple of words? <laughs> Just a couple. I only have about six pages, so <laughs> oh, that's Sheldon's job. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank my family, especially my husband and my children, who put up with me through the entire time of the campaign. My mother, who flew back from Egypt, my mother-in-law, who came especially for this, and although not here with me this evening, but I know he's watching, um, I want to thank my dad for teaching me to be strong and not give up. Um, I would also like to thank the campaign leadership and the volunteers who put endless hours, always with a smile. Special thanks goes to our leader, Dr. Pat Clare, who kept us on track during the entire election and through the toughest of times told us to take the high road and stay positive. And for that, I thank you. Very difficult, but thank you. <laughs> Lastly, but most importantly, I would like to thank the close to 4,000 Bolingbrook residents who believed in me enough to cast their vote. Those of you that are here this evening, please stand. <laughs> from, the, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you. And as promised, I commit to serve all the residents of Bolingbrook and work towards continuing to make Bolingbrook a, a great place to live, work, and play. I welcome the candidates from the United Party to join me. Jamie Olson, who I did receive a message from today, thank you for being here, Terry Ransom, and Ajaz Gill. We can achieve so much more working together than we can working separately. I we can. With you. Thank you so much. To my colleague, Bob Jaskowitz, I look forward to working with you. And as you know, your oath, as is mine, is to serve the entire community in Bolingbrook in a positive and professional manner. And I look forward to that. Lastly, I would like to thank Dorisa and Rick for your time, your efforts, and your commitment. Truly appreciate it. And best of luck to you. And thank you, everyone, and God bless. Seat up there for you. Let's <laughs> Thank you.
Are you next? Is that the order? Sheldon is next, yeah. In ballot order again, Sheldon Watts finishing a term of trustee, fulfilling the spot, unfortunately vacated by Leroy Brown, submit, uh, ran for re-election and was elected to a four-year term, and in this particular election was a top vote-getter. <laughs> Sheldon Watts. Come close like you know him. I know you miss him, but uh, all right. Sheldon, if you'd raise your right hand, repeat after me. <laughs> I please state your name. I, Sheldon Watts. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold. Uh, that I will uphold the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook, the Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook, and that I will faithfully discharge, that I will faithfully discharge my duties as trustee of the Village of Bolingbrook, my duties as trustee for the Village of Bolingbrook, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, in a manner prescribed by law, in a manner prescribed by law. Congratulations. Also, view Sheldon, your official commission as village trustee. All right, thank you, sir. And again, your certificate of election provided to us by the Will County Clerk. Awesome. awesome. You think Sheldon's got something to say? <laughs> Might have a few words. <laughs> Just six pages. <laughs> First of all, Judge, it's an honor uh, to have you a part of this uh, procedure and uh, this evening. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's my privilege. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I stand before you extremely appreciative for the opportunity to continue serving this great community as your duly elected <laughs> village trustee. <laughs> I am truly humbled by your vote of confidence on April 2nd and look forward to traveling the road of ahead with each of you as we work together to secure Bolingbroke's bright future. There are some wonderful people in my life that I'd like to thank because without their love and support, this would not be possible. I'd like to start by thanking my beautiful, hardworking, and supportive wife, Sharon. She has walked side by side with me along this journey called life, and she does it with a smile. Okay, <laughs> maybe not always. Maybe not always a smile, but certainly <laughs> extremely supportive. But she is the rock of our household, and I could not do this without her support. To the Watts babies, the twins, the beautifully outspoken one, who's that? Uh huh. And the adventurous one, who's that? That's, that's Junior. The reason I get up every day and get up for this fight is for those two, Shania and Sheldon Junior. I thank them for their unconditional love, their constant joy, and their humor. Yes, they are hilarious. <laughs> My mom, who was out of the country and could not be here, who worked extremely hard during the campaign. I send my love to her uh, where she is. My second dad, who should be up here, come on up. 
Dell, uh, my in-laws, Mr. and Mrs. Pat Ingram, my entire family. I thank them for the constant love and support they provide. To all of my friends who are here, who are not here, the community supporters, I like to say thank you for being there for me when I needed it most. We had an amazing campaign staff this last election season and a group of volunteers that came out on our behalf. I'd like to thank each of you for your hard work, dedication, and support. To Trustee Morales and Trustee Hoagland, I've enjoyed serving and working with you. On behalf of the residents of Bolingbrook and wish you all the best with your future endeavors. Trustee, now I was gonna say elect, but uh, we went ballot order and you are now sworn in and, <laughs> and it's official. So to Trustee Alexander Basta and to Trustee Elect Carpenzano, welcome aboard. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Mayor Roger Clare for your support and friendship. That's an inside joke with me and Roger. <laughs> Leave that hanging out there. <laughs> it is greatly appreciated. To Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Dr. Pat Clare, I'd like to thank you also for your contributions to our community over the years, and especially your leadership and dedication during this recent campaign. I'm involved in public service because I love Bolingbrook and I enjoy giving back and feel compelled to have a hand in guiding the direction of our community. I look forward to com continuing to work with Mayor Claire and all of my fellow trustees and I like to do it with the continuity that this board and the class and dignity that this board has exhibited for so many years. I want to keep that going with this group, including Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Our village clerk, Carol Penning, you as well, and our amazing staff as we continue to bring top-notch services to the residents while doing it in a way that is efficient and, e as efe and effective as possible. Bolingbrook is a thriving, wonderfully diverse, and family-friendly community. You can count on me to work as hard as necessary to not only ensure that this continues, but also find ways to improve on it. In closing, thank you everyone that came out this evening and for those watching us on television and streaming online, I truly believe that we can all work together. We can reach new heights in this community. I'm excited about this next chapter and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you. And last of the, because we care, and they do care, and we all care about the future of Bolingbrook, Mike Carpenzano. Just a word about Mike. I didn't go through this with uh, Mary or Sheldon, but years ago he was in the banking business and he had the bank on Weber Road and he called me about coming over to do a tour of the bank and so forth. And I walked in and there's this guy just kind of bouncing around. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know this guy, he's like the Energizer Buzzy. He's a bunny. He's always bouncing around, but he's available to everybody and uh, Worked with the Chamber of Commerce, and now he's in the private sector in physical therapy. But uh, going to be great to work with. Should we do a live video now? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, Mike, it's all yours. All right, Mr. Carpenzano, if you'd wait, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I please state your name. I'm Michael Carpenzano. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold. That I will uphold. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. The Municipal Code of the Village of Bolingbrook. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. My duties as trustee of the Village of Bolingbrook. My duties as trustee of the Village of Bolingbrook. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. In a manner prescribed by law. In a manner prescribed by law. Congratulations, <laughs> trustee.
And of course, your official commission. Thank you. And your certificate of election. Thank you. I think I am standing between you and uh, bedtime. <laughs> this room is amazing, um, and this is exactly what our community is about. So I thank each of you for being out here, um, especially those um, and Pat Claire and all of our campaign volunteers. This wouldn't be possible without you. I want to begin by thanking the community and our voters for supporting me and our entire team in this last election. The community spoke, and now it's time to act. I'm truly honored tonight to officially begin serving our Bolingbroke residents, building on the strengths and stability of our past, which is what brought me and my neighbors to this town, while focusing on the needs of our future. This experience tonight is absolutely surreal. <clears throat> It's time to get to business, protecting our infrastructure, advocating for our community, building up our home values, holding the line on taxes. This sounds like something, doesn't it? Sounds like a piece you might have gotten in the mail. Uh, <laughs> but I'm here tonight to affirm that. Um, it doesn't stop at election time. Um, this carries through. We're trustees at large, meaning we serve the entire landscape, the entire geography of Bolingbroke, all residents. Not one party, not one subgroup, all residents. I quickly learned campaigns and elections are incredibly trying on family. Juggling a full-time job, volunteer boards, events, fundraisers, and then campaigning meant little to no family time with that guy. Um, I missed, I think, every bath time for about three months straight. Um, it was tough, but I will tell you that my beautiful wife, Nadia, and my little guy, Luca, uh, gave me strength every single day to smile and smile and smile. Um, and as uh, Trustee Basta said, take the high road. And thank you, Pat, for that. This is my mom, by the way. My mom, Rosa. I didn't introduce them. This is my father, Joe. <laughs> Sorry. My uh, cousin, Mikey Carpenzano, and my uncle, Mike Carpenzano, are here as well. There's lots of Mike Carpenzanos in the room. <laughs> my wife put her business on hold. My parents spent countless nights at our house to babysit, and no one ever complained to me once. As crazy as it sounds, Nadia and I have become accustomed to building our social calendar around local fundraisers and events. We love it. I want to thank God. Um, if it wasn't for our strong faith as a family and for God watching over us, I would not be here today. I love our community. We truly go further together. I look forward to working with all of our staff, all of our departments, our police department, our fire department, our public works. They truly are dedicated public employees that affect the lives of us residents every single day. I plan to listen, investigate, and verify information that can help, help us become more efficient and to keep Bolingbrook a good steward of our tax dollars. Finally, it's summertime in Bolingbrook. Get out and enjoy our town. We have amazing activities. Most of them are totally free and family friendly. Concerts, things that the park district does, the library does, the promenade does, and so on and so forth. Please um, stay involved and active. It's a great uh, community to be in. And because we care about Bolingbroke, because we care about you, we'll continue to be visible, engaged, and accessible. Again, that's probably a line that you heard before, but I'm saying again tonight. It's a promise that I'm keeping. I want to thank, uh, they're not sitting up there anymore. Uh, Rick, one day we're going to be quoting you in these speeches because that was a very powerful speech. And Teresa, thank you for all your candor hugs at times we need them the most. So thank you guys for your service. It's truly immeasurable. I look forward to working with all of our trustees. I guess everyone else said it, so I got to say it too, including Bob. <laughs> I really do. This is going to be the experience of a lifetime. I want you to reach out to me if you have ideas, if you have passions. Um, I'm totally and excited and ready for this. With that, I'm going to close my part of the evening. Luca is way past bedtime. Thank you so much for your incredible, incredible support for all three of us and everyone here tonight. It means that you care. Thank you.
Yeah, would you come up here, please? I just got a text, uh, and I apologize for this service problem, but my daughter watched the last meeting with my granddaughter, and she turned it on tonight, and she said, we're tuning in. There's an Xfinity service alert blocking part of the live stream from BCTV. Someone just has to exit out of a pop-up. It's on Bolingbrook.com and the Facebook feed. So for the people that do watch this on TV, I don't know what the problem is. I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sharing it with you so that uh, you can, uh, the staff will hear about it and hopefully get this rectified. So if you're missing it because of a problem, I don't know what else to say. But uh, Pat, I think we might we might have somebody watching. You want to say hello to your granddaughter? Hello, Samantha <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsay. <laughs> I'd also like to thank I see Ed Schrader's in room tonight, who does a magnificent job running a very popular facility here in town called the Rocket Ice Arena. Thank you, Ed. And I see Alicia Benford, a township trustee, is also with us. Alicia, good to see you. And with that, uh, we got some trustee comments, and we'll be done. By the way, there's a um, reception at the Golden Chopsticks on Route 53 following the meeting. So please join us. We got lots of cake and refreshments, and it should be a great time. Next, we have questions to the audience. Uh, County Board Member and uh, uh, Jackie Trenier said she wanted to say something. everybody. Uh, it's been a long night. Uh, I had forgotten that the swearing in was tonight and I had not anticipated that when I made plans to come here to um, give public comment. But I want to start with the Merriam-Webster definition of tax. It's a charge usually of money imposed by authority on persons or property for public purposes uh, to levy a tax on uh, is how it's used as a verb. We have a new tax here in Bolingbrook. Uh, it's a garbage tax. <laughs> the average home price here in this community today is $218,000. My home is, is roughly worth close to that amount. And my 2018 levy, or property tax bill, is $596 from the village. My garbage tax, my new bill, is $267. Um, that's a 44% increase in my property tax for the village. That's a large amount. Um, it was stated in the letter that we received from the village that the reason this was being done was because um, there were homes that were of a higher value that were paying as much as 10 times more than other residents. There is no line item on my property tax bill that talks about garbage. If there was, then that statement would be true because that property tax rate that we're being charged would be levied on my entire home value for trash pickup. But that's not true. Um, you pay property taxes based on the rate that the village determines that will help them reach the levy amount that they need to run the village. Um, if that, in fact, were true, then people with a higher value home would be paying more for police coverage or fire coverage or roads or any of the other services that our village property tax helps support. Uh, the property tax that we pay does not cover everything that the village does for our community. Most people probably don't realize that. Uh, they collect many other uh, sales taxes and uh, various other types of incomes that help run our community. And it is a beautiful community. I love Bolingbrook. Uh, if you didn't know this, I moved here when I was nine years old in 1970. In fact, Peggy Danhoff was one of my teachers in, in Bolingbrook High School. Uh, moved away a couple of times for short periods, but basically I've been here since 1970. It was also mentioned in this letter that Bolingbrook homes were starter homes and that the garbage, excuse me, the garbage was first added to the tax bill back in the 70s when most homes were worth 75,000. 
Um, my parents purchased their home in 1970, and I believe it was $19,000. I ended up selling it um, in 1995, and it was worth a whopping $59,000, nowhere near that $75,000 mark. I understand that costs have gone up. I understand that revenues from the state have gone down. I understand we have problems with uh, funding of our schools. But I just want to make sure that people understand that this, in fact, is a new tax on our residents based on the fact that they're not able to live within their budget means that they've been living in uh, for the last 34 years. Um, and so it is a new tax. Um, frequently, the party that I, get, I belong to gets tagged with the name tax and spend. Well, I don't know the difference between tax and spend and taxed and borrowed. And that seems to be what happens here in our community, in my opinion. So we do have a new tax in this town, um, and it is a garbage tax. And I wish that our um, village trustees and mayor would have found another way to deal with the increasing costs, but it is what it is. But 44% is a huge jump. I could understand 3, 4, 5, maybe even 10% in my property taxes uh, for the village, but 44% is too much. So thank you. That is, that is so disgustingly incorrect, it's not even really worth talking about. As I said, the charge for garbage is about $20 per home, flat fee by contract. We charge it in a lump sum as part of your property tax bill. We took it off completely a year ago. You didn't pay for garbage pickup at all during 2017 or 18. The one you're paying in the next couple of weeks, the first installment, and we decide to transfer over to direct billing. There's no increase. It's not a tax. All the communities around here charge it the same way on direct billing. So I apparently the election is not over. Election 2021 has already started, and it's a classic example of the distortion of truth that drives me crazy in campaigns is you've got a campaign, according to her and her followers, by being negative, twisting facts, and climbing over somebody's back. Why can't we be positive in our campaigns, talk about what we're going to do? I'm sorry, I have a quick comment. While we were all sitting here at the meeting and after my comments, I believe the uh, person that just spoke, Jackie Trenier, was texting people asking, did Morales call Jaskowitz out? No. Or did I misunderstand? You misunderstood. That's all I had to say, thank you. Some call it the Facebook warriors continue to be warriors. <laughs> but a classic comment, and by the way, Judge Braun, thank you very much for coming out tonight. Do really appreciate it. <laughs> On this great occasion, celebrating the election of three pub, pub, pe people substantially in the April 2nd election, you take the time to play politics. As usual, your timing sucks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Trustee Thomas, Trustee Zarate. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first okay. of all, I would. We have additional people that want to talk. Somebody else wants to say something? I'm sorry, I had a question. Oh, Diane Klepper, one of our employees. Yes, I have a question. I'm actually here on behalf of my mom, Fleeta. She's been in and out of the hospital, so she can't attend and ask you herself. She's not going to email you. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, we were reading earlier today when I was at her home about there's no discount for seniors on the garbage ta on the garbage fee per month. And I understand that it is what it is and why it has to be that way. My concern is that my mom lives on a very small fixed income, and I don't know how she's going to afford the $20. 
Um, and she's wondering what happens if she can't pay or if she's late, then what would happen? Call Bob. Well, um, just as any other bill, if uh, it's not paid in a timely manner, uh, the village has the same collection remedies as any other uh, uh, vendor or creditor, uh, which means it can go to collections. Uh, the village also has to generate transfer tax at any time that a property is sold, and we routinely collect monies that are owed at the time properties are sold. Okay, because she gets about $1,200 a month in Social Security, and this is going to be a strain on her budget. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. help her. I'll pay it if no, I have to. She was to. paying it before in her tax bill. Now she's just paying it as a direct bill. It's the same thing. It's this. It's this. I understand that it's the same thing. It's just a, a, a instead of it going into her escrow account, every that has not changed by her lender. Now she has to find this extra money until that gets reassessed. Okay. She was just wondering what would happen. Thank you. Anyone else? My name's Jay Colder. I need to go up there. Yes, you. Okay. I've been a resident here for about 20 years. And I want to tell you, I try to stay out of politics. Uh, and I don't remember it ever happening here, but the negative has just made me sick. Why aren't we talking about the property tax going down with our uh, park district? That's going down, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why aren't we focusing on that? Why, why aren't we focusing on what we're getting for our money? Does anybody doubt that we have the best policemen, the best firemen? Why don't we focus on that? Who has a complaint about the parks? Or the library. The library. I, I, endless. Okay. And, and I, I want to tell you, I'm a lifelong Democrat. And that shouldn't apply in village. That shouldn't apply to <laughs> And when you miss something is when they're gone. And we're going to miss this man because great peoples are great leaders. And I want to thank you. Thank you. Maybe we should just adjourn at that point. Yeah, let's just adjourn. Thank you, Jay. Just, just dress these right, Dave. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, oh, there you are. Uh, Teresa, it was a pleasure working with you. I wish you the best. Um, you are a great as, as, asset to our um, to our trustees, and I wish you all the luck and with you and your family. And to Rick. Rick, it was a pleasure working with you. I admire you. I admire when you spoke up. And you know what? I wish you nothing but you and Roseanne and your children nothing but the best because I know you are a good father and Roseanne is a good mother. And there's, there comes a time where you do have to step away, you know, because we do give up a lot of time, but we do it for the community. We are here to help. The community. We are not here to fight with you. We have a great mayor. We have great trustees. And I just wish that instead of fighting, we could just move forward because this is this is a special day for the new trustees. And I and I uh, congratulate the, my, our new trustees that came aboard. So thank you very much, and thank you for coming. <laughs> Trustee a lot of the brief report. <laughs> what we normally say during these comments is up on the website, so go look at that. What I want to say tonight <laughs> is I want to thank the friends that have become so close over the years. We didn't know each other before we got involved, and we truly have become lifelong friends, and will remain that way because of who you are, because of what you represent and what you've meant for me as a true friend over the years. And I really appreciate that. The time is not over for us hanging out together. We just won't see each other up here. So thank you very much. And welcome to the new kids. 
Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations, Sheldon, you. on your election. Thank you, sir. And uh, we'll talk later. Mike and Mary will, uh, will coach. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, no comments for me? <laughs> that time. Just want to... Yeah. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Just want to make everyone aware that uh, the Bolingbrook STEM Association, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, is having their family STEM night extravaganza. That's going to be this Saturday, May 18th, from 3.30 to 6 p.m. <coughs> Please spread the word. Uh, there will be drones, robotics, coding, video games, all sort of fun uh, and exciting activities, raffle prizes. Uh, and more. A live DJ. Uh, it's going to be a great time. It's free admission, so, so please spread the word. Uh, I'm excited uh, again for, for this new chapter. Uh, I'm willing to work with absolutely anyone uh, in our community that is genuine about working together. And uh, to me, uh, we have to put the residents um, as, our pri as our priority and we have to ensure that uh, when we're sitting down and when we engage, our, our mindset is in the right place. And it's really about what's best for the residents and not politically driven or political uh, power driven, right? But, but about what's best for the community. And uh, let's figure it out. Let's work together. Uh, so there, there could be some legitimate concerns. And this board, my colleagues, and the mayor is uh, more than willing to sit down and figure out how we can work things out uh, for the residents of this community. Thank you. Just a quick note on uh, Saturday uh, at the Promenade Bolingbrook is our official pet parade. Um, Heidi and Fran Miller were uh, duly elected as our uh, Grand Marshals through a very tight social media vote. So please come out. Uh, kicks off at uh, around 3 o'clock. Come out before you head over to the uh, extravaganza over at the BRAC. Um, I invite you guys out to all come out and join us at the pet parade. You can still register your pet. Um, I want to thank uh, Rick for leaving me the Crayola crayon that was here. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. Um, and really, no one's going to rain on this parade. We have great energy in this room, and I thank you all for being here tonight. First, Trustee Hoagland, Trustee Morales, the best to you and your future. I know you're going to stay part of this community, and we expect to hear from you. We really do. Congratulations to the new trustees as well. Um, as you could hear from the remarks up there, you know that I'm the uh, black sheep of the trustee board. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but I would like to make some comments about the trash thing. I did ask to have it on the agenda, and it would probably would have been more appropriate to talk about it earlier in the evening than talk about it now. Um, but I come from a different perspective, and if you keep understanding it with an open mind, hopefully you understand why I'm saying some of the things I'm saying. Okay. First, I understand, Roger, we're saying that this is a, a wash um, on what people are going to pay from what was we saved on their property taxes to what they're paying separately from that. But when people look at their property tax bill and it's the same amount or higher, that means that even though they're paying that into their mortgage trust fund or escrow account, it's the same amount of money that they're going to have to pay. So this ends up being extra coming out of their budget. And please keep that in mind when I'm talking about that. One of the things that I was disappointed about and I've asked several times is, since we are charging this now, is why we're not able to add some additional benefits or changes to our trash program. I know we're suggesting lids for the recycle bins, but that's a voluntary program. And the people that are violating the, um, the I don't even know it's part of the municipal code, but allowing their trash to fly all over the neighborhoods and go all over are not going to come by and pick up a voluntary lid to throw under thing because they don't care. They want their neighbors to pick up their trash. They don't care what their neighborhoods look like. <clears throat> and a lot of times on a windy day, their recycle bins are empty before the truck even gets there. Okay. What I would like to see is mandatory lids. Uh, prescribed for these people 
Goot is offering, a I think it's a $3 a month program to rent a uh, lid recycle bin. We do have lids here at the uh, village that you can pick up on a voluntary basis for free. But if we made this mandatory, maybe the fear of being fined for or not caring about your trash being in the neighbor's yards and in the creeks and in, in the woods would make a difference. That's one of the things I think we should do because we are adding this now and people are seeing exactly what they're paying for. The other thing is, and I don't know why we can't do this, is those homes that can follow municipal code and keep the toters for regular garbage hidden away from you for, that can afford that and pay an extra fee for that and they want to, what's the harm of letting them do that? There are a lot of people that like the status quo. You have that option. I'm not saying make that mandatory, but give people that option to rent a toter for your garbage if you so want to, okay? That doesn't stop anybody from doing the garbage that they want, the way they want to do it. We're starting to build like other communities are starting to build, and those other communities offer that option to their residents as well. The biggest thing I want to talk about, though, is what uh, Diane talked about. Um, and that is, I think as a village, we need to take and make an effort to say, how are we going to help those who cannot afford this additional money coming out of their um, fixed income, OK? Now, there's a lot of ways that we can look at that. What we're doing is we used to pay for trash out of, your, out of the general fund. That was almost $6 million. Now we're going to collect that separately and pay Groot out of that. We're taking that additional money that's in the general fund and using that for other things. I would like us to set up a fund internally with an application process for those who say, hey, I'm struggling here, I need help. The vets who came up here today are talking about how they help vets who need help with utilities and, and all that kind of stuff. We talk about our diversity in this town. We're, we're very, very diverse. We're proud of our diversity. That includes people of color, people of different races, and people of that, but it also includes people of different income. We have a lot of people in this town who $250 a, a year more doesn't matter a bit to. There's other people that maybe they have to rearrange their priorities a little bit, but they can still afford this. It's not a big issue to them. But then there are other people that skip medications because they don't have the money every month to pay for their medication. There's no reason, because we care, that we can't help out those types of citizens within our community. Okay. Now, we, we saw in an email earlier um, that the Will County Center for Community Concerns has been helping out a lot of Bolingbrook residents in a lot of different ways. Instead of setting up a separate fund here and a separate department here, maybe we say to them or contract with them to help our citizens who need help when it comes to paying this bill. And we'll make a major donation to you. If we even took one half, less than one half of 1% of our total budget, and I'm talking about the $80 million part of it, not the 150 million part of it, we could very easily set up a fund for $250,000 and set that up and help these people out. And that's all I'm requesting is that we consider that and consider that seriously in, in doing that. I don't know if, how we get it done, it's, if we can't get it on the agenda, but I think public service or some group can work on that and propose that so we can help the citizens who are also part of this village and part of that diversity that need that help. That's all I'm going to say. Is there we have no executive session this evening. A motion adjourns and orders. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Well, why don't you guys jump in there? <laughs> They're still in training. Motion by Carbonzano, seconded by Boston. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All the same sign. We stand adjourned. And we're going to go to the chopsticks. Please join us. We're all be eating egg rolls for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope all of our meetings are as expensive. It's on the. Here you go.
I'm Mike Lawler and I'm your host for the April 11th, 2019 Bridge in the Gap. And uh, this is a uh, TV show that's uh, 